Song, chapter 93, a short one today. The Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, reigneth. He's in heaven in glory reigning. The Lord Jesus Christ will reign one day in Jerusalem. It'll be one day when all the kings, all the queens, all the prime minister, all the presidents, they will not have their time. There's coming a day when on this earth that Jesus Christ will reign the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Under him will be the, the apostles of the Lamb. <clears throat> and under them will be the saints of the church age that had right to reign. Throughout all time, eternity past, present time, and eternity future, God reigneth. God's in charge. He is clothed with majesty. And majesty is a greatness of, of appearance. And when we look at the colors of the rainbow and we see the sunsets and the sun rises and when we see those pictures of Hubble, what outer space holds where our eyes can't see, when we see all the different colors and vibrance of animals in God's kingdom, when we look at from being up north, we look at the the leaves that change in the fall. And we look how great our God is of color. And when we think about him being clothed with majesty. Again, majesty is greatness of appearance. We're going to need new eyeballs. And a new body to see God one day. And we'll say the Bible says God is his spirit, but description is there on the throne, something, light, brilliance, a light that would blow your eyeballs out. And there's no electricity. There's no batteries. The Lord Jehovah is clothed with strength. The strength of God in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. The God that created all things. And he sends an angel to wipe out most of, a, of, a, of an army. And he has great power to defeat the armies of the Bible. He has power that he has taken the lives. He has power over Satan. The power that he has is unlimited. That he has caused the nation of Egypt to be ruined. The nation of Babylon is gone. He has such great power that he was born of a virgin. In Possible. And the strength that he had for a woman to be 90 years old to give birth. There is nothing that God cannot handle. He's all powerful and all majesty. Wherewith he, God, has girded himself. His majesty and his strength. Did not come from man. His power did not come from the devil. His creation did not adorn the creator. God himself. Where did God come from? He's always been. And he always will. He says I am. That I am. Of all power, all realm, of all the all. God is self-positioned. He does not need food. He does not need water. He doesn't need to be plugged in. He doesn't need to be recharged. 
He is life himself. Jesus said, I am the light, a holy, natural light that will be in New Jerusalem, described in Revelation 22. The world also established, it's fixed, it's settled, that it cannot be moved. Russia is going to wipe us all away in Boston. Coronavirus is going to wipe out humanity. No, nope, not according to the Bible. I'm not worried. If I were to die as a Christian, I'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Now, if you were to say that something was happening, that the earth, the solar system, the entire universe was going to go up in flames, A thousand seven years, a little bit after, I have something to worry about. You gotta have seven years of tribulation period, and you gotta have a thousand years millennium for the earth to be dissolved. You may lose your government, Babylon, but you ain't gonna lose the world. Nations come, nations go, but God has established. God has set forth of the world. That he says all the world one day, the graves will come open, heaven and earth will flee, and those who have not been saved in the church age will stand before God a great white throne judgment. And we'll have a new heavens, a new earth, and new Jerusalem to follow. Thy throne, God's throne, is established, set, firm, fixed firm of old. How old is that throne? It's the eternal throne. Where did the throne come? What time of period did God make his throne? There was no time in eternity. You can't ask what the beginning was. There was no beginning. There was a beginning of the earth. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. But there was no creation of God. And there has been no creation of the throne. It's always been. That's an old throne. And God has and will and will always sit on that throne. Satan tried to usurp the authority of that throne. Isaiah 14. But he loses. Thou art from everlasting and will be everlasting more. People want to know, you know, where did God come from? What he's always been. And we think on the realm of time, space. Because we are born and living in time and space. From the moment that we are born, most likely, maybe in places where there, you know, isn't time they will say okay at such and such time a.m. p.m. this child was born on such and such date time and space began when God said the evening and the morning were the first day but it has not always been so what we call eternity past And then time will stop before the, the great white throne judgment and we'll go into eternity future. You know, we've been there for 10,000 years. We're not going to be there any period of time. I thank God that the great white throne judgment, there is no more time. There is no more wristwatch. Because billions amount of people are going to stand before God and their names are going to be judged. Is it in the book or is it in the book? And every, all the works have been judged. It's going to be awful, but there is no awful long time. We cannot ask where God came from. He's always been. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. 
We're going to see in a moment, verse 4, it's the movement of the water. There were mighty flooding when Noah's time. There was a flooding when the earth. I believe in the gap of Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. When God sent the floods and just froze it. I see. God has power over the floods. Whether it be a little tiny flood in a little community. Or it will be a worldwide flood. Genesis 1-1 Genesis 1-2 was a universal flood. Noah's day, it was a flood of, of the earth alone. Not touching Saturn and Pluto and not even touching the moon. And there are oceans and seas and lakes that, that the waters, they wave. They're current. Jesus was on a boat one time when the waves were overpowering and coming into the ship and sinking. The Lord on high, he's high in glory in heaven. That's so high we can't even get there. Listen, these space agencies, whatever country, whatever technology, they're not going to get themselves into heaven. You're not going to shoot one of them rockets and, and poke through the, the crystal sea of heaven and say, oh, look, we found God. is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Have you ever heard of a, a arena, a sports event, where there's many people, and you've heard the clapping and the talking and the applauding and the shouting for the team? That's what it sounds like. A group of massive people is described. Mystery Babylon. She sits on many waters. And the people in the Bible describes it many waters, many tongues, and people, and nationalities. Ben and I, I've had the liberty to be uh, a, a little river where I come from. The Yannick River. I've, I've heard that water through the rush of the melting snow. And if you ever, I don't, Matt, I, I don't, I can't picture what it would be, but there have been the Niagara Falls or those uh, other fall places, mighty waterfall. I will assume that they're loud, judging by the little waterfalls I've seen. And they do great power. I've seen people's backyards get rushed away in the, in the mighty current of the water. And yet God is powerful. How powerful is the voice of God? Let there be. And there was. I want and ask to give a message to Balaam. And he asked, gave the message. The voice of God spoke to the uh, birds. And I want you to bring Elijah to me. And the birds did. The voice of Jesus Christ knelt down to that little ass. And he says, the colt, take me into Jerusalem. That coat had never been ridden before. There's coming a time that there's beasts coming out of the earth in the tribulation period. And it says to those beasts, don't touch the grass, don't touch the trees. But hurt the men. The voice of God one day for the church saint will be come up hither and we're gone. The testimony, thy testimony, are very sure. Everything that is written in the King James Bible is sure. As much as you're living and breathing, that's what inspired me. It's been God breathed. Holiness becometh thy house. We're going to a place called heaven. We're going to a place called Jeru New Jerusalem. And what is the holiness there? There's no sin. There's no darkness. There's no wickedness. There's no wrong. 
Everything's clean and everything's right. That's holiness. O oh Lord, forever. What is forever? Never ending. Never ending. 